Gorilla X Dog going raw dog in the WWE. September 24th, 2017. The day to see the Lego Vision Day. Our summer has disconnected. I wonder which will go down faster. Pages pants or raw ratings? 1F5? I can't even refresh my browser with 1F5. Shit. Uh, what do YouTube? This is your boy Diakis. And yes, I am here with the Real Wrestling crew. And we would like to welcome you to Real Wrestling episode 65. We're officially senior citizens now. Jesus Christ. <coughs> what was the nursery home? Then the attempted suicides and the pills. Oh, um... Um, yes, my name's Diakis. Um, uh, everybody introduce yourself in the orderly fashion. This is the real edge, dog. Go ham. <laughs> the concept. And Diakis. Um, no mercy just happened. And I'm about to have no mercy on the scoring system. So, um, let's get some scores. For the, as the pay-per-view happened, I'm leaving, as the pay-per-view happens without Raw and 205 modifying it. My official score, uh, excluding the top two Matt Day. The last two matches, excluding the last two matches, just to be fair to the talent, I give it a seven and a half. Including the last two matches, I divide it by zero, so I have no score. <laughs> it's undefined. Okay, cool. Uh, my score, if I wasn't pissed off at the last two re the results, the, the last two matches, my score would be a seven and a half. But due to me being pissed at the last two matches, two. Two out of ten. <laughs> I also, two. <laughs> I ain't watched most of the papers. <laughs> I only judge it on the main event. So, two. <laughs> Let me make this quick. I already said my Diakis my Diac review, and I'm not reneging on this on this shit. Negative 20. <laughs> <laughs> the pay-per-view was such fucking garbage. Well, it was great until those last two matches happened. And I and I don't, I don't, I don't rely on Raw to rectify any mistakes that Craig has done. <laughs> no, fuck that shit. You put that shit out there, you, you dig that grave, you lie in that motherfucker. Negative 20. End of story. <laughs> um, let's go into the, um, the, should we cover the, even cover the free show? No? Alright. No, I um, sure. only just cover SmackDown free show, because that's the only time Ty Dillon's would get time. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, um, let's go to the main card then. We have The Miz with the Mr. Rod versus Jason Jordan for the Intercontinental Championship. Basically, basically the dominant title on Raw was defending in the opening match. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was, was a sure. good match. Yeah, it was a good I match. Just uh, with the interference. Just Jordan go, Mister Rose, do what he's supposed to do. Yeah, pretty much. Standard yeah. heel. Yeah, standard heel. Okay, I can't get mad at it. And Jason Jordan sure as hell ain't ready. You saw it. That 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 disgusting promo he cut after the match. Yeah, that's I wanted to throw up. <laughs> See, this is where... It's considered, Jason Jordan is considered a failure. This is where... <laughs> this is where... This is where a problem oh, when shit. it comes to uh, uh, American wrestling compared to the Indies. Mm -hmm. You can get away with in America not being a great wrestler, but you got to at least be entertaining or not fuck something up. Yeah. Because, like, most folks can't act. Most folks can't act worth a damn. You're right. So, like... There's a reason why most of these guys are scripted because most of these guys fucking suck <laughs> on the open mic. When WWE pulled that shit on the draft, we already knew what the deal was. Paula Cruz did okay, but Kalisto fucked everything up. <laughs> some folks just some folks just need uh, some folks just need a script. Everybody can't be the new day. But let me say this about Jason Joy, and I and I swear I, I do this all the time. When he was with uh, Chad Gable, his weaknesses and flaws. Were hidden. That's why he was in a tag team with Gable. What what got him over anyway? His moves and when he just when the hot tag when he just went crazy. You take him out of that situation and you want him to talk and basically just fail a lot. And I'm like, that's not what got him over in the first place. But eventually, and then you give him the stupidest gimmick ever. Like I knew it was failure from the start. Actually, the Angle Son. I knew this whole storyline was failing from the start. The only thing I was hoping that would come out of this was a Kurt Angle Jason Jordan match, and that still could happen. But him being Kurt Angle Son ain't exactly a failure. Just Jason Jordan sucks on the mic. No, it's a failure. Cause like they, what they done with the, what what they done with that? Hey, but remember what you said. Jason Jordan was was good for his moves. Kurt Angle can go. Both of them can go in the ring. 
It's just that Jason Jordan just can't sell it that well on the mic. The storyline is that Jason Jordan is the illegitimate son of Kurt Angle, and they done nothing with that. He got this. Hey, he, he can go. it with the Miz, <laughs> and if it wasn't for how great the Miz is, like with like saying that, oh, you gonna have nephew tears and you be handed stuff, and you know how the Miz just get off of just being, you know, the Miz. The pro- the problem is that <laughs> he's fucking right. He's over now. That the point is everybody's cheering the men and they're booing Jason Jordan. Well, that's because yeah. they were in LA too, and yeah. that's where they, Miz built from. But yeah, I, they've I, been doing it though. It's like it was just loud in LA. Yeah, what? Yeah, what? I wasn't even watching the match, so I'm just going by the stupid segments on Raw. That yeah, happened to see on YouTube. There is one thing to be said though about some of these guys ain't getting over. Folks forget how long the Miz been in the company before fans actually even gave a shit about him. I mean, they gave a shit about me in a long time ago. Once I, he got with John Morrison, they gave a shit about the men. Nobody cared about the men's back then. Yeah. Not like they do now, but they gave a shit about them. Man, folks got him to jizz. I mean, well, we <laughs> but, that was maybe. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I mean, to this day, I still don't like the men. I don't like but the men. He's do he's good at his job now. Yeah. Back then, he was just annoying as hell. Like people gave a fuck about him, but not like it's they like, liked him. But, I mean, at the same time, I mean, for guys getting over, like, folk, I mean, if folks talk talking about, like, Stone Cold and don't remember, like, dude, you remember when Stone Cold had blonde hair before, right? Folks don't remember Stone Cold from the past, like, thinking Stone Cold when he was just the ring master there, Austin 316, and, like, Austin had a long career before he became Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stunning Steve Austin. Yeah, he was stunning <laughs> Steve Austin for a long time before he went to WWE, became the ring master, and then became... Stone Cold Steve Austin, like, so he had a long time to actually get the ropes. Jason Jordan is new. I mean, The Rock was running around in a fruity ass <laughs> Samoan outfit, being Rocky Maivia, and folks talking about die, Rocky, die. <laughs> then he became The Rock. Yeah, so I'm like, these guys ain't built in a day. Jason Jordan got a long, long time to get injured. He had a long ass time to actually build up like everybody else did in the past. Today, just fans just impatient as hell about when it comes to these guys. Good Mike made that same point. Because these guys are the way more pressure than they were Stone Cold's under. He, I think Good Mike Ward said, he said, um, they're probably going to, maybe one of the gimmicks they were trying to run with is like have him suck so badly at the mic, be such a cringe inducing baby face that it eventually turns him heel. No, I almost like knew that, but I mean, Kofi Kingston was in WWE for a long ass time. Folks thought he was Jamaican before Africa. Then he finally comes New Day, then now him, Xavier Woods, and Big E are pretty much some of the most over guys on the roster. It's not that. If they finally find something that stick with them. But that goes for everybody, though. Exactly. Like, if it's bad, it's just bad. What Jason Jordan doing is just not working. Yeah, but I mean, we're supposed to... It's just that simple. Yes, eventually down the road, he will find something that sticks. I, I hear everything you say. You're right. But the thing is, like... If it's not working, I don't mean we shouldn't shit on it. <laughs> oh, like, that ain't the issue. It's just how the folks are. Like, like, dude, everybody's not buried just because this gimmick didn't work or they're dumb kind of gimmick. Not, yeah, you're right. He's not buried. This, this shit just ain't working. And the fans are booing them and shit like it's supposed to. Something don't work. You let them know that it's not working. So, like, he's going to... I said, if he sticks around the company, he's going to get over, but I mean... But think about WWE. They don't give a fuck if it's not working or not. They go stick with it until they say, hey, it's not working. Well, until unless, they realize it's not working. Well, unless you're the new day and you go talk to Vince, which is, I'm still where, wondering where these people are that uh, that uh, Adam Rose so aptly described. We don't. The people that go talk to Vince and change the shit. <laughs> it worked for, um, still like the guys who say it works. Yeah, I know, but where's the guys that's doing it? I know the people say it works, but there ain't nobody that seems to be doing it. Well, Even Chris Jericho who had an argument. He told us. New Day, we already know about the Shield. Uh, Jinder Mahal already said it. That's probably why he's the only hey, person... That's probably why he's the only person that's not a dumbass that looks at the TV from an but, angle. But in New Day, <laughs> in New Day's case, they shit was out of and we don't know what the hell Vince was thinking in the first place. Later. Who the we fuck can't... came up with his Jason Jordan shit? That's what I want to fucking know. Was he watching too many episodes of fucking Mario or some shit? Like, no. Oh, let's let's. Yeah. This, this storyline is the brainchild of Vince McMahon. Really? Yeah. This is this is 
they invent the idea. Oh, shit. I mean, it sounds similar to stuff they did in the 90s. I'm like, this is yeah. not shocking. Like, once I heard, I was like, yeah, this is clearly this. <laughs> I like that. I like the idea, but Jason Jordan is is a son of Wells Academy. He probably better off using Apollo Chad Crews. Gable was a better person to put in this role. Yeah. Hey, but, he was a better person to put hey, in the role. Hey, but look funny. at the two people; they chose the bigger one. Hey, but and it's, then it's more funny because Jason Jordan's black. Yeah, so, I was like, it's funny he had his black suit. <laughs> yeah, so that makes more sense. But Chad Gable was perfect for the role. <laughs> but I'm glad they didn't do it now because they would have been shitting on Chad Gable right now. Even though he got a better personality. Yeah, he had anyway, but this is a rock. Which show Benjamin? This is a. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I forgot. Well, where were they at anyway? But anyway, this is what, a rock. What was the next match actually? Next fucking match. Um, Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt, man to man. Oh my gosh. I like the Grubbin. I like. I just like their few because they're doing. They're doing what I thought they would be doing. You know, I wish they. You know, I said this when Finn was there. I wish they were doing this with the older Bray Wyatt where he was far more cryptic. Now he's just basically as a little saying, the world's lying to you, man. I mean, I mean he, he, he he's just so damaged. Like, I mean, he... Bray is damaged. If he like, was, you said it right. If they had a double fuck with Bray character and actually let him beat people, Bray would have been in a great spot right now. I don't like, worry about the beating people part. It's just, you take it what, as a, you simplify <coughs> promos that much, you're like, it ain't the same as it used to be. No, the point is, when Bray come out there and he says you can't do this and you can't do that, then you go and actually do the stuff he said you couldn't do. It just makes it makes him look weak. Like, I love his promo because, you know, he can cut them cryptic promos and give you a hell of a fight and lose. And then he can come out there and actually recover from it on the mic. But like, Bray Wyatt never was a character where wins and losses matter. Once they took that, um, once they took his promos away, basically from him, and the Wyatts, he needed to start winning, other because he was just cutting the same old promos that any heel well, could. What's, what's the generic? What's the generic formula for fucking Bray Wyatt's promos? Like, um, let me see. Hey, I'm yeah. the ear of the world. I'm the ear of the world. I got the whole world in my hands. I fuck JoJo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, that promo I wrote. <laughs> 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 I'm buried. I'm buried so far I can't even see my ankles. <laughs> yeah, he's buried. Then follow the buzzards and, and then run and then, and then cut that. You've got to laugh. You got to oh, yeah, I got to laugh. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, oh my goodness. He does down to a formula. I'm like, why? I'm like, I'm like I get some of the fans. I'm like, I probably don't get his promo song. He's rambling about like, for the folks who get it, it adds to Bray Wyatt's character. He's the same fuck nigga that listen to mumble rap shit. And then, <laughs> you know, I say, what the fuck they say? He was another guy who suffered by going to Raw because he, when he was on SmackDown, they had built him up again. Yeah, yeah. They even gave him the title and you were like, all right, Bray champion. Let's roll with it. Then the injuries fucked him up. Boy, that, I was wondering how that face run was going to go. Man. Now, I want to talk about that. No, no, I did about that one too. Yeah. I, I also want to see how the face run. They took the whole Wyatt family face. I want to see how that was going to work. Yeah. <laughs> that looked like it was going to be cool. God, what happened to the other two? Oh, yeah, Chris didn't have anything for him. And that's why I'm like, why um, don't they put the wires back together? Like, I don't know about Eric Rowan, but Luke Harper is being repackaged. Like, it. Well, like, just, I, I don't know how no long more it's dirty, take. No more dirty white beaters? Man, no! Smack, Smack they need they can at least put Ro- give Rowan back to him. SmackDown needs an extra 15 minutes, be. dog. Yep. Two hours ain't enough. Well, I guess they can do it in that contract. I don't know, like, SmackDown, sometimes I just wish it would end early. <laughs> I think two hours, two hours. I mean, why do you think those people ain't showing up to those shows? I mean, back when Bray Wyatt, I mean, back even then, I like, I mean, we turned Daniel Bryan into a Wyatt. I'm like, where's that Bray Wyatt again? Because <laughs> then you took, like, I was like, him eating L's now, it does become a problem with his promos. But, like, now his promos are simplified. He doesn't have the Wyatt's with him. So, even if he, he lost before, Finn, there's a chance Finn Balor just got his ass whooped, and they would just carry him off to the swamp somewhere. Mm-hmm. And we, Finn Balor just disappeared, even though Bray lost. Uh, they took out Finn. He's missing on Raw. Bray cuts a promo about it. We probably don't see Finn for the next two weeks or whatever. But my biggest problem with breaking up the Wyatt family is you clearly have no plan for Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. Yeah. Unless you actually have a plan with what to do with those two guys, you should have kept up with Bray as long as you possibly can. Uh, I can't think of nothing to do with Eric Rowan besides Bill Wyatt. Exactly. <laughs> Luke exactly. Harper. Exactly. Why take him away from Bray? There was no point breaking up Luke Harper anyway because he could do a singles run anyway as part of the Wyatt's. He had a t- He could get a title on his own. Exactly. If, I just don't begin creative sometimes. 
I don't know what I said before in the nineties, they would have kept the group together. Exactly. And then Luke Harper would have slowly fade away from the Wyatt and you wouldn't even have to do a breakup angle. And or if he did fade fade away, he's still somehow allied with the group, so he'll just end up popping back up as a reunion. Or they would have did a few What hell they doing with the shield? They doing with the shield. Seth Rollins and Dean tag team champions. They Let's talk about that. <laughs> I like. Yeah, that's what it looking like. Dean and Roman, they work together, even though they're not in the Shield anymore. Then once once Dean and Seth worked out their differences, now they tag team champions. I'm like, so they so they had no problem with the Shield brothers kind of staying near each other. So the Whites could did the same thing. Well, it, hell, Bray could call Bra- call Braun Strowman in for a favor and just fucked up Finn on Raw. Well, it wouldn't help him <laughs> from taking that deal on Sunday. It would have made the L. Hey, but thing is, besides JoJo and Braun uh, unleashing the rage on Finn Balor, it would make that L feel a lot better. <laughs> What's everybody? But I, I like Finn that Balor? match too, though. Huh? Hmm? What's everybody jumping Finn Balor? He got <laughs> jumped before the match oh, at um, No Mercy. Then he got jumped by fucking St- um, Goldust. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? I mean, like, damn, he, he, he on the wrong side of the tracks or something? Yeah, but now he's going to get fed to uh, Brock Lesnar. Uh, Who is? Finn Balor, he's next up. Thank God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I, I honestly don't even care because they got to do something with Finn. They got to do something yeah, with Finn. Yeah, they finna do something with Finn. Yeah, you feed him to the beat. That, that's good, actually. How does it Well, I guess it gives him something to do for a month. And shit, like, that's main event status. Oh, yeah, okay. Instead of being lost in the mid car with Bray Wyatt, you get the main event status. The problem yeah. is, the raw, the problem is, the Raw is nothing but mid card. Well, they got a top, which you got. The top is Joe, Braun, Roman, and pretty much it. That's Brock, all mid card. Brock ain't there. That's they, but they're all doing mid card stuff because Brock ain't there. Well, yeah. That's why everybody's whole thing. All over again. I said that when Brock <laughs> showed. Wait, I'll say, oh, I'll say this. Well, Brock has done way more he did than in 2015. I'll say, I'll I know, say that for the main event. Why? And all his title matches this year are better than everything he did in 2015. <laughs> Which makes it slightly one tick forgivable. The only problem, <laughs> and we'll get to that, with Brock, is that his, his underwhelming finishes. They might be good than a certain Man, finish. Man, don't like, get me started on that. We ain't even there yet. There yet. What's next? Man, you're making my score go down even more, man. Just don't even talk about it, bro. Jeez. By the way, Finn Balor won, by the way, Finn Balor won the match. Congratulations. It's Bray Wyatt. You beat Bray. <laughs> as much you as, have it. As much as Bray, my boy, I'm like, of course when I knew Bray lost. <laughs> I mean. At least he did have a great I mean, first quarter match, of the year. And I know uh, Bray lost. <laughs> at least Bray had a great. They did. Like, I seen parts of Raw, and I was so sad to see that they did that stupid whole world, uh, in my hand, shit. After the Finn Balor's match, I was like, "Oh my god, they're still going through it." This. Hey, I like. I was like I said, I like the feud. You know, it's not as where I wanted to be. They just gotta get it. I they just trying to get past TLC. It's two to what? It's two to one Finn right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be three to one. So. <laughs> <laughs> the Eater of Hells and Joey. Yeah, because Finn has to win if he's going to brought it. Okay, the next match is. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins versus Shazaro, or The Bar, whatever you want to call them, for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Mm, arguably. No, not arguably. Match of the night. Yeah. Had to be match of the night. Yeah. After what Cesaro sacrificed, yep. Yeah. Got to be match of the night, yeah. I thought he lost it, too. He got something worse. Yeah, this yeah. dude jammed up in his gun. Right. Oh. Even, even if it was, it's by some millimeters. It's still too much. That had to hurt like hell. Yeah, I know. He's not a champ, though. He still went out there. And he still, won't get, and he still won't get the universal title anytime soon. Cesaro going to be 40 before they actually think about he, him. But here's the <laughs> funny about Cesaro in that. His highest single title was a one PGW title. Nowhere else has he ever got anything in the well, singles. He's always been a tag wrestler from he's for been a tag wrestler his whole career. Yeah, so I, I'm not. You shouldn't be shocked. I shouldn't be shocked really if that's the case because he was with Claudio. I mean, he was with a uh, Casazone. Casazone. I mean, yeah, Chris Hero. Chris Hero. That's oh, it. but think about it. He and look at all the top tag teams he's been in in WWE. All of them got over. King of wrestling. I'm uh, I'm thanking Cesaro for finally getting him up for a finally shaking. I guess the Triple H curse off of Sheamus. Yeah, he figured handling phase Sheamus. 
I hate, uh, hate Shane. I, I still do hate Shane. <laughs> but I love this team. I like, I like his entrance. Because he <laughs> blinds everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that was Shane. I now, Dean and should have lost after that power bomb spot because he got yeah. hit with. Because Seth got hit with the with the white <laughs> noise and then a power bomb from a dude who's coming real high off, out of the sky. It was and a he kicked dead out. Deadlift power bomb too. Come on, man. He deadlifted his ass and like. Oh, oh no, that was Dean. That it's just hey, oh, still. Yeah. Dean's crazy. You know, you know they get the shield boost. They ain't got Romy yet, so it ain't full power yet. But you know, I mean, it was a second row power <laughs> bomb, dog. He got. He, he said that, that was the end of the match, though. I don't yeah, know what they were doing. From that. No, no. They, I don't know. I don't know. They don't have the vest on, so I guess not. It's I a, guess they're trying to compete with the New Day for a better tag team matches or whatever. I don't know. And look, I, look, look at all the finishes. And that could lead to a Survivor Series type thing. Speaking of that vest, when, when the shit reunite um, next month, I hope they all have the vests to come out and cry. <laughs> yeah, my th- well, I don't know about the crowd part. At least have the vests in the whole gear. I have a feeling they just gonna come out there dressed like they normally do. Yeah, they are. If they do that, I'm gonna be so disappointed. Yeah, I, I, I want the shield music with just the beginning part back. <laughs> like I want all of that stuff back. Well, I, I wish. Why they, Roman don't have his own thing yet? His theme is different. They changed the chords of it, but I wish he would actually got a completely different theme instead of yeah. a toned down shield and theme. Cesaro could have protected himself from his teeth getting driven into his gums. Yeah, put his arm up. He protected the business. <laughs> well, Austin used to always say, "What?" Well, he used to legitimately punch people in the face hard as he could. Bro, he protected I, the business. I don't know. Having a dentist saw around your gums probably ain't gonna be the funnest thing in the world. Cesaro didn't even open his mouth on Raw Mm-mm. Mm-mm. because he ain't had a surgery yet. I think the surgery didn't come to Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Well, we ain't gonna be seeing him for a minute. Oh, uh, he got with the stitches. Mm-hmm. Nah, they said he should be back in the ring by next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Well, and you know WWE will have him in the ring by next Tuesday. <laughs> Boy, but then again, he had no paint on go on with the match with, with that. I guess it can't be that bad. But yeah. I knew... I mean, I wasn't going to get together team after that our whole best of seven thing where Sheamus pulled... When Sheamus pulled the um, Golden State Warriors and blew that um, 3-1 lead. <laughs> and Mick Foley, I was like, I can say, Mick Foley is going to make them a tag team. And I was like, I hope he does because it's going to be good. They're probably one of the best tag teams they got out of this. Mm-hmm. And it's just like Goham said, Cesaro single-handedly saves Sheamus' uh, reputation. <laughs> yeah, he, he saved him. I still don't know why he needed to save him, but still. <laughs> now again... Now getting the Triple H curse is a good thing. Yeah. Anyway, let's go on to the next match. We have uh, the Fatal Five Way for the Raw Women's Championship. It contains Lexa Bliss, Bailey, Emma, Nia Jax, and Sasha Banks. That too was an above average match. Yeah, Pay per view was looking real good around yeah. this point. As usual, WWE does multi man matches or multi women matches um, pretty well. I just wish they just stopped doing them. <laughs> no chance. Creative is still <laughs> being creative is still being lazy apparently. Hey boy, they catching these checks. They gonna put me for some TV. <laughs> But, How many damn matches did you? No, that power bomb. That power bomb that took the whole Yeah, that shit was ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I'll, I'll give, I'll give um, creative and Nia Jax this. I can't figure out why the way they keep pronouncing it Nia. I can used to pronounce it's it Nia. Nia. Or Nia. It's, it's Nia. Well, yeah, they it. always pronounce it Nia. But I they, 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 they don't call Nia in it too. They don't call Nia Long Nia Long. It's Nia Long. That's what I always call it. <laughs> well, yeah, we all bring that up. You know, 100% right. <laughs> Like, Cause he always throws me off. <laughs> no role models, but <laughs> but I'm glad he gave Nia J- that uh, a made. They actually did what I said. He actually helped made her a monster somehow. Cause before it was like y'all keep making her look trying to talk about how threatening she is. Like, dog, she looks better than a lot of the women in the ring. I was like, y'all can't make a monster that looks better than somebody. Yeah, <laughs> and she doesn't look like she will kill a bitch. <laughs> oh no, she just. A- Plus five women on the roster. She don't, they they try and make her like the monster of the women division, but 
if you never win or you you ain't beating nobody really, like she getting all little cheat wins on Raw. It's not the it's not the it's her actions before like she just didn't she just didn't look threatening after that after that destruction she gave Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like you, you hit the nail on the head. She don't look threatening. But after what she did to Charlotte, like okay, they improved it so her still like. She just started having more impact on her moves. I'm like, okay, so they improving. Then how they sell her in the match? I'm like, she the multi man match. So, so you, whatever. <laughs> she the multi man match. They usually are jumping the hell out of her like you should. But you got some monster in the ring. Yeah. So like they did that power bomb spot. I'm like, <laughs> okay, now that looked dangerous as hell though. But I mean, at least she didn't land on her neck. Now, what was the point of her attacking uh, Alexa Bliss? Uh, I don't know, but that raw exactly. a couple of weeks ago, but that raw, <laughs> uh, but a raw a couple of weeks ago, I, don't know, I, don't, I can't remember why they were yelling at each other. But I think Nia slapped her up once. My thing is, why couldn't it have been like a fucking? Is it Nia? Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss straight up. That's what it should have been. Uh, I don't do, everybody inserted herself like, oh, we're going to insert ourselves. Here's the thing: it should have actually been a one-on-one match between Sasha and Alexa, a, the rematch. But when Nia did what she did, I'm like, okay, fuck Sasha. Let's go straight to this. <laughs> since, since y'all did it, y'all could have gave Sasha a rematch on Raw and had Nia get the pay-per-view match. God, it was starting to Why did, what, what was yeah. the point of Emma? Now, I love Emma, but what was the point of Emma? <laughs> to apparently eat the pen, according to the rumors, which are wrong. Now, they brought Bailey back to eat the pen. <laughs> I'm not sure who they brought back to eat the pen. No, do Bailey was clearly brought back to eat the pen, and, I, and that makes no sense. They're making, they're making Alexa Bliss look like a champion of happenstance. That's all they look like, to be honest. And now she's from the field with um. Now she's gonna get murdered. Thing. Yeah, until yeah, cause when, when um, when October hit, October twenty second is the correct day, I think. It'll be funny when that day hit. It's over. You know, you know what? I got a feeling that ain't what's gonna happen. No, I'm talking about Mickey James being on the roster. Mickey James is gonna be the one who get to be the first victim. You mean they gonna feed Nikki? Nah, they already did that already. <laughs> yeah, that was for like again. <laughs> but that was only the next team, so hey, yeah, the A show. So that <laughs> that was NXT, so that doesn't matter. Oh, I feel they got Mickey James get all dolled up just to um, get murdered. I didn't get that at all, like, cause I watch Raw. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Continue. Like, I watch Raw Talk, and out of nowhere, Alexa just started dissing Mickey J. Because she <laughs> said she beat the whole women division. I guess uh, Renee brought up that she didn't beat Mickey. And she was like, she's an old lady. <laughs> 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 and I was like, Mickey, Mickey don't look like no old lady. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Hey, but you made but you a joke. You know how women hate on each other. Like, but you yeah. made that joke folks were making on when she was on SmackDown. Why is Alexa Bliss beating up her mom? <laughs> so they probably just took that and hey, ran with it. You look like a mom. That's, uh, <laughs> uh-huh. That's probably what they went with it. She is a mom, but... Mm-hmm. She's only one year younger than Tamina, who also doesn't look like she's 39. But, you hear her there. They did what he did. I still want to see Bailey. No. I, st- I still want to see Bailey turn emo. What's her name? Shayna Baszler, who they just signed. Mm. She's thirty-seven. Wait, what? She at least she been on the Indies for. She was on the Indies yeah, for like two been, years, so she's been she been be for right. a while. She ought to be all right. Wow. But um, what do they do with Bailey and Sasha? I told you, turn Bailey heel. <laughs> Yeah, and like, make her emo. Okay, unless you go emo, I don't want to be a heel, baby. None of that is gonna happen, you know. They're gonna. Just, yeah, they're I gonna, know. I, but you, but like <laughs> when he first pitched it, I was like, it is so perfect because it's the reverse of her character. Like she is so happy, always giving hugs, trying to slap. Um, uh, I don't know what they call them too, man. They call them Bailey buddies now, which is stupid. But <laughs> alliteration, man, alliteration. She was so happy <laughs> for her to turn heel. She would have to just go emo. Like, she can't we'll be see. the same character or just start pe- beating people ass. None of that's going to happen. Of course what's, what's it's not going to happen. happen. Gonna have beat because they're going to be going to take good ideas. <laughs> that, and I, that and Vince Perla emo, what the it's fuck is that? Tag, it's going to be tag down, team matches. They're going to be in multiple meaningless tag down, team matches swinging. while they focus on three women around the title and then Nia Jax will be floating around like an asteroid 
around the uh, gravitational pull uh, down into the into the gravitational into the uh, the atmosphere every once in a while and then go back to floating around. That's what's gonna happen with Sasha and the baby. That's, that's exactly what's gonna happen. I said this a long time ago. When they just learn how to write stories for women that don't involve the title, they did on SmackDown when they had that pay view. They had three women's matches. With and then the feud between Carmella and Nikki was really good. Yeah, I had Bailey come out. And it had nothing to do with the yeah. title. <laughs> Was it then Bay had had Bay come out that song? What I think called Nikki FM. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> or girls not gray by F I. You know, or or um, sugar we're going down by Fall Out Boy. Some some emo ass shit. You know. But what they could do? They could have a feud between Sasha and Nia. They could have a feud between Bailey and Emma, and then you just have Alexa feud with Mickey and Tyska show up. Oh, God. Then we have... And then yeah. Oscar destroys uh, Alexa in like 2.5 seconds. And, and then... And then she destroys the whole women's division. And then we just... Then, then we had the white food wars and then Alexa Bliss is no longer the, the hot new toy and... Paige is going to be on SmackDown. Yeah, Paige going to SmackDown. What? That's going to be I interesting. I don't like at all. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. <laughs> they fucks. Dude, they fucks. The reason I don't want Paige to go to SmackDown is because she's already been in the program with Natalya. She already been in the program with Charlotte. She always been already been in the program with Naomi, Tamina, you name it. She already been in the program with all the people except Becky Lynch. If she would have went to Raw, all new opponents. Sure, she went Raw. <laughs> We good. We good there. She should be written better off SmackDown. Yeah, she'll get written off on Raw. So, because the top of that ch- the top of that chain is Oscar. And I'm like, I think you said that's written why off or written off. They they put on either one. They, they put on SmackDown because they need to help in the women's division. Uh, yeah, even though they, they util- even though they utilize more women than Raw. Yeah, they utilize the individual way better. But it's just the talent they got in it. Hmm. I said, like, what? Well, so I should. I mean, they use more women on SmackDown too, because Raw didn't use the same five women for the last year or so. Well, it was four until they threw Emma in the, <laughs> in the uh, picture. I mean, because everybody's either hurt or Alicia Fox. Who? <laughs> Alicia Fox. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. She oh, be, yeah. yeah, I know. I didn't see a picture of her in Fashion Week. She's not hurt. They just ain't got nothing for. Her. Of course. That's a waste of a good talent. Though. It's you get paid just to be chilling. Mm-hmm. And then they get mad about that. I'm like, fuck that. Look, look at what Paige got. That's why I only get back up quarterbacks in the NFL. Like, I'm getting paid to do nothing. Well. I mean, I know I want to showcase my skills to get paid more to do something. But no, nah, right now, I'll sit back and chill. Because like, once to get something, or you convince Vince into giving you something, then you can do something. But in the meantime, you can eat um, catering. And then practice beating Seth Rollins on uh, AJ Styles in Madden. <laughs> or she could go talk to Vince. But I don't even know if that's going to happen either. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alexa Bliss won the match with Penny Bailey. What, what's the next match? With her patented DDT. <laughs> Which actually looked pretty good. I think they dropped it straight on the head. Uh, yeah, that shit looked nasty. Bailey See, she dropped it on the head. DDT is coming back. See, she dropped it on the head. With the ramp, rampage. So she could go with more DDTs. I don't know. And then you got... Them, uh, guy the NXT who uh, you DDT finished. Well, we know one thing. One. Power drivers are never coming back, so. Never heard. Well, actually, it came back in that one. Never mind. You know what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, next match is um, once in a lifetime. That's probably going to happen three times in a lifetime. <laughs> Rowan Reigns versus John Cena. <laughs> And that was a good match for me, too, especially mm-hmm. towards the, the uh, after the halfway point towards the end. They picked up. I didn't care much about the match per se. The build up was what got me for yeah, this. The build up was amazing. The yeah. match was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ain't I, better than the main event, though. I liked the match, <laughs> but I just didn't care about the match. See, I didn't like the match, but it wasn't a bad match. I just uh-huh. didn't like it. It's just that when Cena went, when Roman kicked out of the fourth AL, I'm like, man. Yeah, that it. there. The, 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 I was so tired. Then, of I shit. told Diakis and his brother, I said, watch it take him one spear. After a Superman punch in the spirit, it was over. Like, you at least got a Superman punch him three times. 
Like, no, this didn't. It's a cute one Del Rio did. Now, that was some BS. Hey, I, I said this about Roman Spirit. A lot of people ain't been kicking out of it. It's all a bit one spirit. It's all them damn Superman punches we've been seeing. <laughs> well, that's why I say you should hit scene with three dents. <coughs> You hit him with three from di- three different directions. That's money. Caught my fist, nigga, rain that bitch. Hey, I'll say this though about that. <laughs> thing is about thing is thing is about Roman. Like this is what folks want. Is that he will be a badass Samoan killing machine? They are turning him into that. See, when well, seeing the AA up his power level goes up and down depending on the situation. <laughs> but this is Roman Reigns. He basically retired the Undertaker. His match with Braun Strowman have been just slugfest. This man is battle ready, and then it's Roman. Yeah, Roman versus Cena, a true mirror match. I mean, it's the big dog, <laughs> and, and then and then John Cena. <laughs> so, but this kid, Roman won't be able to see himself in the mirror. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> but funny, Cena, oh, but shit. Cena can't complain because now he know how it feels to kick out. Somebody kicks out too. <laughs> Now he know how to run. The thing is, he, he barely, <laughs> I like the way he kicked out of it, though. It's like he didn't forcefully kick out of it. Like, Ugh. He barely kicked out of it. I mean, like, Ugh. Ugh. But you know, dude, he did a super AA. Kevin Owens kicked out of it. And John Cena, lucky saw God. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been the perfect time to bring back the bowl of And the spirit, well, he still ain't ready. I guess he still ain't walking. Straight. Yeah, probably would have walked. That spirit through the table was nice, too. Mm hmm. Even though they should have been counted out, but the referees don't do their jobs no more in WWE. Yeah. <laughs> Just like in the main event that we'll talk about. So let the count five out. Row right, you got, sometimes you, I have to defend the referee. Five A double count out, nobody wanted to see that. Not for this. No, man. no. See that, the, way see the, the ref, shit the ref the getting paid money. big bucks to do his damn job, but he ain't doing his job right. So they need some damn replacements. They need some replacements. You know, he is doing the job right, because they would have counted out. We would have riot. <laughs> no, John Cena and Roman Reigns should pay, pay a damn attention. That's true, too. Get, get in the damn ring. You know, you know you got a 10 count. You know what? I agree with you now. They should enforce the rules more <laughs> so these guys can actually do what <laughs> needs to be done. And the well, why would you put somebody running. through a table knowing you ain't going to be able to get back in the ring? Exactly. Well, they said 10 count. Did they say how fast the 10 count must be in the rules? Well, you got to at least start it. John Cole, was, John Cole was sitting his old hey, ass there doing we, nothing. We gonna, one. We gonna bring. We gonna bring up. Ten minutes later. Two. <laughs> we gonna bring up this count thing again in the next match. Incompetence. Five rope breaks. He, he didn't call the last one. <laughs> oh, fuck up. <laughs> see, I see. Uh, boy, I mean, on SmackDown, boy, you get a ring when the count gets around eight. That every count slows way down. Hey, it man. didn't slow down for time. It did, did it. That's cut up. <laughs> You supposed to get a referee though. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> like, damn, dude. <laughs> hey, no need to say. Oh yeah, I already said one anyway. And the fashion in which it happened. The big dog. Yeah, the big dog did run the thing. Oh, one guy who I, I read his reviews for Raw. He said uh, he hates when Cole call, says big dog. I think I'm gonna agree with him because the way he says it, <laughs> it's so goddamn annoying. Big dog. The commentary <laughs> on this show in general is just horrible. Yeah. I mean, hey, they're you know, They say some of the dumbest shit. No. Like, I know Vince feed them these lines. No, Booker T said the dumb shit. Cole yeah, and too. Cole and Corey had to cover from him or or attack his point and then destroy it, which they do on Raw a lot. No, <laughs> Booker's greatest commentator. <laughs> it's funny because he's a heel, he's a face, but he's a heel commentator. <laughs> <laughs> but he's the only one who'll stick up for the brothers in the ring. Yeah, you Street remember what happened one. when New Day first won? He's like, I ain't seen nothing. I was like, yeah, you gonna book me? That's what I'm, I'm talking like, about. Hey, is some bitch a new word term of endearment or something? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. That's 45. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Booker oh, T shit. was rooting for Apollo Apollo Crews and he was, until the, the match was over. Then he's like, oh. Well, it's a marathon, and we just got to win. Oh, man. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. We just got to win. That was so funny. <laughs> All right, let's go to this terrible next match. Okay. Um, The next match is Enzo Mori versus Neville for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. And this is where my score started to drop oh my God. precipitously. Mm. Like... That nothing happened during the match. Neville beat his ass the whole match. The entire match. No <laughs> offense from uh, 
none from Enzo. So he got a, he did the DDG. He did the DDG and that's it. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to say about this match? Then oh he, shit! What what happened? Scott Splinter, mom. Oh. Don't don't more what Enzo did. He just rub a piece of ice on it, come up, but and put it out. Uh, <laughs> and then he goes to grab the title, distracts the referee. I mean, like, what am I even supposed to say about this? He he kicked him in the nuts. Now, let me talk about that part, because we just talked about the count. Why in the fuck did the referee just stop him and count because Enzo picked up a belt? Well, he did, right, because he got to tell him to put, he got to stop him from injuring the uh, opponent. Yeah, no, belt. yeah, in the when he got, I'm talking about when he grabbed the belt on the outside of the ring. He just straight up stopped. Enzo was going to be counted out. And he straight up stopped. Well, he still got to do it preemptively. I mean, he he did this. I can't I can't complain. At least he, he counted. He did do his job. At least he counted. Fat on the outside of the ring for five minutes. At least he counted. Unlike that, unlike that bum yep. during the scene in Roman Reigns, man. If it's only a ten count, <laughs> even your ten count is so slow that it go two minutes. You still had extra three minutes to play with. Even though just sat out there. The match went for ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, what? 10 minutes of 40 seconds. It was a 10 minute match of Enzo getting his ass whooped. Yeah. No, five minutes of it, he was on the outside of the ring. Oh, he yeah. With the belt. Hold on, I don't, I don't know about five minutes. It's like, it's like. But it was a long time. It was a long fucking time. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what I'm supposed to talk about in this match. He no, got, I'm not saying much. <laughs> he got. So he distracted the ref, low blow him, then he, rolled him up and grabbed the tight. He kicked tight. the ref in the ball and literally. Killed the cruiserweight division. <laughs> you mean Just you kicked Neville in the ball? Well, I disagree. It don't matter. You killed the cruiserweight division with that blown up. The cruiserweight division died. Because here's the thing. If it died, well, Enzo, his thing, after the paper, you and Enzo were leaving. He's driving out whatever car he was in, holding the belt up, and the crowd is just chanting and cheering for Enzo. I'm like, this is why WWE does this shit. The audience I see on the internet is pissed the fuck off. On the flip side, these fans are going crazy that Enzo has a title. Yeah, they chanted for Enzo to the next night. <laughs> then, Enzo, then he pulled the best thing. You've got the pay-per-view crowd, the post-pay-per-view crowd, mostly full of smarks. So, they don't want Enzo because Enzo has no moves. That's Enzo's only problem. Enzo can't fight. And Which is why. the champion of a cruiserweight division that was already dead. But, it was already hanging by a thread and Enzo just cut it. <laughs> uh, like I said, they switch. They switch plans up. I had no problem with the plan switch. The match was shit. <laughs> it's okay. No, it's a, we finna get for the next. Well, let's say it's on our uh, title reign go six months. We finna get six months of shitty title match. <laughs> but thing is, how we gonna get six damn months? It. But thing is, the match is gonna. I'm not sure. I was scissor day gonna get no damn six months. He ain't Neville. Cause that's gonna run. That's gonna run out real quick. But dang it, I it, never beat him at the next. The way Neville will beat him tomorrow. She Neville came because you remember. You forgot something. Man, the whole cruiserweight division beat his ass, so nobody gives a title shot. Yep. <laughs> hey, they, <laughs> they let their anger get to him. I mean, like, that's, you could call it, however many people in the division is, you could call that a, how do you turn the whole division face the other way? But the fan of like, the reaction after that, I'm like, this is why WWE did this. Yeah, after Enzo won, after Enzo won, all on Twitter, all the cruiserweights were ripping Enzo. And I'm like, huh. I was like, are they doing this? I said, are they do- is this a shoot or are they just doing this in kayfabe? Kayfabe. Then Raw comes up and like, yep, this shit is kayfabe. Because they all lined up to beat Enzo's ass. And then, <laughs> but Neville, but how Neville sold the loss though was amazing. Neville over here all hunched over, he looking all messy. Like, okay, the king lost his crown. He beats the shit out of it. Then Enzo, Enzo first of all, cuts that damn promo. He's going ham, showing off his new gear. Then Enzo, man, not Enzo, never comes out there. Then nigga so pissed off, he just beats the shit out of Enzo and gives up his own title shot. And then, he said, they went off air. Braun comes out, finishes off Enzo, uh, beats Enzo ass some more. And then Cruiserweight like, go ham, say, was a five minute beating? Uh huh. <laughs> I ain't seen so funny. Airplane was two of them. I ain't seen a beat down like that since Metal Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just kicking. Put the boots to him, medium <laughs> style. <laughs> that was just basic end zones. <laughs> I'm like, but WWE basically said it themselves that 
We have nothing for Enzo. Basically, him going to the Cruiserweight uh, division with a demotion. So that's what they think about that damn division. Then they gave him the belt. The thing is, if, the if that rule <laughs> if that rule could be true, one, he should not be selling that much merch. Number two, number two, one, two or five live thing got talked about the most out of everybody. Oh, well, he gonna sell merch regardless. If they put but him thing on TV, is, he do this little gimmick. He gonna sell merch. But thing is, thing is, if it was probably so bad, two or five live wouldn't have got the reaction this guy. Because they're talking about that more than anything else on Raw. What what reaction two on five? Nobody want two on five live. <laughs> Just by the reactions they have. Can I talk about Can I about Gallagher and on um, Brian Kendrick's new de- new thing that you're doing? Then now, I talk about say this. Enzo brought attention to the show, but nobody gives a fuck about the show. Actually, and nobody. It don't even crack the top twenty on the network. Of course it doesn't. How how is that possible? <laughs> oh, it's pretty easy. You got most. Most folks get a network watching old stuff. Uh, the other thing you be watching is pay music and Original programming, which has wrestling on it, will make it. But you forget what it's targeting. They're not targeting the mainstream audience with that. That's the biggest problem with the wrestling. They that's them on Raw. That's the main reason. But that's the main reason why Enzo's dead. Enzo has more mainstream appeal. Well, yeah, Never everything. definitely when, does it. When Enzo basically buried the division, he was right. <laughs> like that. He didn't bury it. Oh, he buried. How about he buried to one audience? But like I said, for most of folks over here chatting for Enzo, when he had the title, and then the fact that that double turn actually worked, you can't pull a double turn if folks ain't invested in it. If nobody gave a shit, nobody would have a reaction to it. You know, the cruiserweight division would be better if they would just let them do 2005 cruiserweight action. Because the point is, they, keep, Apollo, let, they keep trying to let them wrestle right, like Randy yeah, Orton. That's not cruiserweight. Case point, Classic cruiserweight shit will be all right. They're, it'll they're be all right. Randy it'll be, but then get it'll be all right for one audience. The other audience will find it boring. Two o five live. The O stands for Orton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I, I agree with concept on that. They don't do as much cruiserweight stuff as they should, but they, they what they did. O five cruiserweight action was safe. Nobody got hurt during O five. Not your knees would disagree. Man, they turned two o five live into a mini raw for the cruiserweights. It's going to always be, like, <laughs> it don't matter what WWE you take from anywhere. They're going to turn it into WWE. That's why I, I, I said this years ago, I didn't even want a cruiserweight division. But all cruiserweights should not fight like Randy Orton. That's not cruiserweights. I was boring. I wasn't even going that far, but. No. All right, fine. Modified Triple H. That's what they're fighting. They're still not good enough. <laughs> God, God damn it, dude. Stop. I mean, Gallagher fight. Like Gallagher doesn't fight the way Rich Wan does it. I don't care if you got one like Drew Gulak, who they just killed. And um, no Gallagher, problem, really? Well, he didn't fly anyway. That's why I said, you know, I think I don't like. I'm not mad at the gimmick. It's just that it's not what he was. He's like a modi- he's like a modified Matt Striker. TJ they Pete? turned him into um Stephen Richard from the Simpsons. Oh, that's <laughs> right, the Simpsons. That's what he reminded me of. Oh, TJ no. Peter got fucked over just cause uh, he was the wrong guy at the wrong time. Yeah, TJ P, yeah, that would hurt him. Rick Swan, I don't know why they gave up on Rick Swan. Cedric Alexander's the only bright beside Neville. Man. It's the only bright spot in that division to me. So Gallagher's new turn is, too. I was so mad to see that damn uh, number one contendership match. Well, I don't, yeah. I don't want watch 205 Live. I ain't even know Gallagher's the turn. Was, okay, there, here's the thing. They're fucking Cedric Alexander had, like, everybody. He had everybody. He pretty much beat everybody. Yeah, and Enzo came and rolled him up. I was like, what the fuck? I was, <laughs> I was 38 out of that shit. That's why... I cannot get invested in, in Enzo as a damn champion. But the funny thing about Enzo is he got heel heat doing the right kind of stuff. Like, I, uh, do, do I say I want to do my segment in this? Because I think some folks don't get some things. Not saying y'all don't, but some folks don't get certain things about heels. You're supposed to fucking be mad at what they do. You're not supposed to be happy with shit. You're not supposed to be happy with... Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. Oh, you ain't supposed to be... I said, you're supposed to be pissed off that... Well, actually, what? Do the same thing. You're supposed to be pissed off that Jinder Mahal calls Sinsuke Nakamura uh, Mr. Miyagi. He's a That's hell. He ain't supposed to be fucking nice. <laughs> yeah, this is true. true. I'm true. like, he didn't, I said, he didn't call him a chink or, or a jap or you whatever. Have. Or something like He didn't go full blown. <laughs> or he's just a, he's a full <laughs> He's just a full blown racist, but I'm like, you had a crowd when they did it in Indian National after they up here trying to fuck India. And I'm like, and then some, and then some folks in the crowd they call him a sand nigga. I'm like, I'm like Jenna Mahal is, Jenna Mahal is a Canadian. One, he's a Canadian, and two, he's Indian. He's not even Middle Eastern. You stupid fucks. I'm like, I'm like, that kind of shit a heel can't do, because I'm like, bro, 
some shit. Bro, like, uh, no, no, we gotta have some standards. All right. All right. You all rook the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, the Mr. Miyagi thing, that was perfectly fine. Oh, and he'll post to piss you off. All right, uh, uh, enough stalling. Let's get to it. Uh, let me say one thing about that, what he just said about the whole gender thing. Right. The problem with, with that is that it's how WWE is. Like, you supposed to be trying to, like, get to, like, bring people from that country into your network. You know, WWE is a public trade company now. So, Yes, Jenna's being the heel. But at the same time, but with that line, Jenna could also been killing a lot of business for the WWE. <laughs> that's the only that's the issue that people have well, smart people have with it. Some people are like he said, they are getting mad because he's being racist and everything. I'm like, oh the fuck he's supposed to be racist. <laughs> the, the, the whole point is give is that he he's like he think people is racist towards him. So as a heel, he's supposed to be racist too. <laughs> like <laughs> I like Mr. Miyagi. Call him right. Mr. Miyagi about a scale or that. I like that's a one. Oh, that wasn't that bad. The rook thing is what I was like. Oh my god, they like, actually went there. You all rook the same. Nothing. That was more. That was racist. I don't have a problem with there. none of it. I really don't. <laughs> Me either. It's just that if you look at WWE as a business, that was stupid as hell. But the funny thing, you could have just yeah. pissed off all your Japanese audience. But the thing it was, shit, which they already got, and they yeah, but, all three of them. But despite, what, despite what WWE says, then Japan is their number one competition. But also, what pissed me off was the person who helped make that such a big deal doesn't even fucking watch wrestling. It was just a random journalist who heard okay, that. All right, he 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 should really. Well, shit. no, he, he should. Watch that journalist, that journalist did. <laughs> that journalist did, did his re, his or her research before he did. His, he or she asked people first, then made it wouldn't. He or she just turned But I mean, oh. what I mean by that is like, of course, some folks would be like, I'll ultra sensitive, kind of like, well, look what's going on now. But thing is, it's what a hill's supposed to do. Exactly. All right, we can start in the. Yep, let's get to it. Oh, jeez. I, I, I thought this, my, my score is still dropping now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get something more offensive than Trump. Okay. <laughs> you right. Okay. The main event is Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman for the WWE Universal Championship. <sighs> Everybody rage. Why, well, God? So one issues. F5. I had so many issues with this. This ain't even a one F5. Five thing. rope breaks. Ref five didn't call. Didn't breaks. tell the last one. Ref didn't call. To, <laughs> he bounced off the road three. He was in the corner. Brock was supposed to let go. Ref, I told you these incompetent referees. This should have been a double count out of the scene of that. I'm standing yeah. by that. These referees are incompetent, dog. They need some replacements. I mean, who in creative... <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> who in the hell in creative thought about this? Braun Strowman is obviously not, obviously a Vince guy, like Roman. You have him basically this whole build-up, make Brock like a bitch almost every week. I don't think Brock got over on, on Strowman once during this whole feud. No. Not at all. None. I mean, he rolled out his German suplex like, like nothing happened, and then he got Braun'd. I'm like, I'm like, Braun Strowman beat his ass in the um, multi-man match. You know, Brock won it. I'm like, Braun Strowman been getting Brock this entire time. He got him better than he got, and then Goldberg got him. Yep. After all that shit, you make Braun look like a straight bitch in this match. And then, 1F5. <clears throat> no, let, let me tell you my problem. Wait, 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 wait. Did he take, also take, what, what was it, three power slams? Mm-hmm. Yes. See, this is my issue with Matt. It's basically everything he said. Braun destroyed this man, leading up to this match, even at the last pay-per-view when he should have won the damn title, but there were two other people in the match who kept getting involved. And one-on-one, Braun should have beat him there. So, Braun basically owned this man for like over a month. We get to the pay-per-view, and guess what happens in the match? Braun owns this man most of the match. Yep. He hit a finish like in the first three minutes, and then Brock kicked out. I'm like, okay, that's Brock Lesnar. Understand yep. But Brian keep destroying him, man, and destroying him, man, till he got a little fucking lock in. And then, like the like the concept said, when when Brian grabbed the rope, I was like, why are they breaking up the fucking hole? And then he kept bouncing off the rope. I'm like, they should have broke up the hole. Eventually, he broke up the hole. Five rope break. And that's all Brock needed to get back in the match. That was my first uh, that first thing I got mad at. Cause then when he started German, I'm like, okay, Brock's supposed to start German eventually. But when he hit the F five. And he won with it. <laughs> I was like, are you fucking, you talking exactly. about underwhelming. God. You, know, you talking about the score go, dropping, going from what? like 7.5 to goddamn 
negative 20. Two, like, let, me, let, let me say this. I don't care that Brock beat him with one F5 because finishing should be do. protected. That F5 was the ugly F5 I seen him deliver yeah. yet. Yes. It was no impact to it. Well, it wasn't the way he did to the big show? Well, he got this kind of flop. It probably, <laughs> it probably did that. No, no, this one's worse. This one's worse. <laughs> I think it was this one's worse. No. There was no impact to it. It was no way that uh, Braun could not kick out of this L5. So it was a tropical depression, gotcha. Like if, you, like, if you hit your finisher's flush and Braun would have kicked and would have went down, I wouldn't even have a problem with that. No. It's, but the way the match went. I understand protecting finisher, but you can protect the finisher after hitting it three times, which is what you should have did. One F five. I would have been okay with two F five. Two, two F fives would have been fine. Three, yep. three yeah. optimal. Old ass take F five. And the match would have kept going, and then he would have hit with the F five again. Then yeah. But you know no. what? I would. You know what? I, the only way I could agree to what they did because it did look like Brock and barely escaped. He hit one F five and got a fluke three count, just like he did against Samoa Joe. I mean, there were two guys who should have beat him that he just barely got by. I mean, Taker took more than that. Yeah. You know what got me like? Taker took more than this. I'm like, what he built a Braun like? <clears throat> Braun would have obliterated Taker worse than Roman did. Yeah, and after you, <coughs> after a dude beat your ass so many times, man. you got the F five and three times. So who, who the boss? Yeah, this, this fucker survived being nearly killed by Roman Reigns in a fucking back of a fucking ambulance. He should be near about invulnerable. How the fuck he only take like what six German suplexes, a Kimura that should have been broken. And a fucking F five and lose the fucking match. Exactly after what fucking stupid. after all the damage Braun did to him in this match, he shouldn't, a, he shouldn't even have the strength to get him up for the F five yeah, to was, deliver it to yep. beat him. There was a nigga man like a bitch or like he beat him down. But like, what's one who getting beat down like Brock up here just like hey I just take all this shit, do my stuff, hit my Germans, Kamora, which should have been broken. Mm-hmm. Then one F five I'm like. Man, come on, two F five, yeah, two F five, and then like go ham. It was ugly as hell. It was, it was yeah. the that what got me. If he would have hit it flush, I probably would have been like, oh shit, like that would take dead. him out with one blow. Yeah. but no, nah, not no ugly ass L five. And this will prime, man. This will prime bro from the early two thousands. Oh, I would have been okay. It would have been a much better match. Yeah. Uh, that one had agility and now, stuff. Now, Prime Brock also could have, uh, I, I mean, Brock's strong, but I know he ain't strong enough to actually toss Braun like he did a cruiserweight with an F5. Because everybody know F5-1, when he just basically just fling your ass and just snap All you. Oh, that Shannon Moore shit. Yep. The, the way the match should have went, like, Brock should have showed, like, he could actually stick with him from the get-go. No, instead of just continue the ass whooping you've been taking for the past month. Like, if he would have came into the match and was like, okay, this is a different shit. Now that, you know, the light's on, you face a whole different Brock. Then it would have been a back and forth competitive match, and Brock would have got him with the F5. But to have Braun just own this man for a month straight, and during most of the match, then he started getting off his Germans, hit him with the F5, and won. I was like, come on. This is what normally I say up here. So, somebody lose a match like this, like, well, if this them try to make them look strong, even though they lost, like, y'all made Brock, Braun look way too strong just to get tanked like that by Brock and lose. Yeah. That's nothing. If they were back and forth it's, and that went for one F5 where, where Braun, like, oh, yeah, like, go ahead and say it. Like, this is Brock in the ring in the actual match. Yeah. This ain't pro, this ain't said, man. He's ready. Like, go, like the Goldberg match in the final, like, okay, this was their best match by far. Brock, Brock actually had a strategy. But you know who they <clears throat> turned Brock into in this match? They turned him into Cena when he would get destroyed by Brock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was down in the same match. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cena got that lucky L5, <laughs> AA, whatever you want to call it, and beat him. And, and then once again, WWE dropped the ball. You should have put the title on Joe and let him run with it. Braun Strowman even hotter than Joe. That, and he's been protected. He's been a beast. He's been a monster. And then just to just yeah, all that. That's the most disappointing thing. I'm not mad because Roman's going to win the title at WrestleMania. I'm mad because I know it's going to happen and they hadn't changed anything. It's not even that. You could have expect- let Braun win at uh, No Mercy. That's it. Let him run with it a little bit and have Brock win it later on or some shit. You could have had Braun could- hold this belt into the Rumble and had Brock beat him in the rematch there. That been cool. And then oh, had yeah. Brock go into uh, Mania to lose it to... Uh, to Roman Reigns. Oh, be right. right. oh shit. At worst, making a triple threat. Bronze you know, champion at WrestleMania. You killing the... Mm-hmm. He, he, they, they killing the momentum of both Joe and Braun Strowman 
just for Roman Reigns down the line. Here's the problem. They killing Roman Reigns as well because basically up here you basically just say, okay, it's going to be Roman um, Lesnar, and we already know Lesnar's going to lose because his contract is up. That's yeah, true that, too. Like, I didn't even think of that. Yes, they're hurting Roman too. Is, you the fucking Roman already. Roman already gets heat already for Smarts. This just for this is just a self fulfilling prophecy that okay we know Roman's going to WrestleMania. We know Roman's most likely is going to be the one facing Brock Lesnar. Unless they do some swerve and Roman wins the title before Mania. And he's fighting somebody else in the main event. It's almost guaranteed now it's going to be um, Brock and um, Roman at Mania. God, I mean, it could. I'm, who else is that? That's like? why I'm disappointed about. If, du- series, if WWE, it be it. if WWE does an interesting swerve where Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar is at WrestleMania is the co-main event, and Braun Strowman is the one who ends Brock Lesnar, I'll I'll be down with that. But then that means who Roman's gonna face? No, I don't think outside don't, Samoa Joe. I don't think after Finn, that's it because they. You remember the whole thing about him facing everybody from the it, the the. Uh, yeah, five a match. They still got Brady to go. They're through. not gonna do Brady. They will. They, you know they will because they, they hadn't changed plans yet. Yeah, bro. Uh, go ahead. Bray will be the Bray will be roadblock. They hadn't changed plans. He'll just plans be the piece of. Had. He'll be just a piece of meat just to say Brock series for WrestleMania. <laughs> They're gonna do a rematch between either Brock. They'll probably do Brock and Braun rematch at the Rumble. But that's why that's the Instead thing. Instead of do Bray. See, people. No, are, no. I said roadblock for Bray. When is Roadblock? Between WrestleMania and on the Rumble. I thought Fastlane was between WrestleMania and one, the Rumble. Well, one or two. Yeah, it's Fastlane. See, you're thinking about the Roadblock they had when <laughs> Triple H faced uh, Dean Ambrose. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. But they might not, Roadblock even, to, uh, might not even defend oh. the title at Fastlane. But most people mad because Roman's going to get a quote-unquote coronation. That's not it for me. It's the fact that I know it's going to be Roman and Brock and Roman's going to win and they're not going to change anything in between. That's what I'm pissed That's about. That's not even uh, the Roman part's not even a problem. No, like, that's what I mean. Uh, it's the fact that I know that Roman's going to win. Not that Roman winning. It's the fact that I already know and they're not changing it. Like, throw a wrench in somewhere. No, I hope no, I hope my wrench to say this somewhat. Somehow, Roman ends up with the title. Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar ends their feud at Mania where, Braun's the one, where Braun ends Brock Lesnar. He ended Big Show, I guess. Then he ends Brock Lesnar. So, he's the new beast. He's the new conquering beast of WWE by taking out Lesnar. Roman should have won it at SummerSlam. Then that way, that would work too. But that way, but the problem is where that leaves Roman. I like. Yeah, I, get, I, I guess there'll be Samoa <laughs> Joe. God, if they they could have stopped this at SummerSlam. If WWE does that swerve, I guess that leaves what Samoa Joe versus Roman at WrestleMania. Yeah. That would be cool. So I would have never see. had Roman beat Braun Strowman. I would have had Braun Strowman undefeated all the way up to next WrestleMania. He going in as the champion. You know, he said he beat Roman beat him. I try. I had to think for like, when did Roman ever beat him? <laughs> he beat him back in February. That's last line. Yeah, yeah, he beat him that one time. Uh, you remember when, when, Roman, when Braun tried to hit that splash? And oh, when was- Braun beat himself. <laughs> I try to think like, when? And then, but Braun event won the feud overall <laughs> thanks to Samoa Joe. Braun has been beaten what twice? Yeah, right? then um, then uh, won the feud. Roman tried to hit commit um. Vehicular manslaughter. But uh, Roman, like, <laughs> Roman tried to finish just his way. <laughs> Assault with a deadly weapon, attempted murder. Yeah, that criminal. And they, they going to give him a title match at WrestleMania. How dare they? And Braun made it out of the ambulance and lost the F5. To one F5. God. Sorry ass booking. <laughs> and won't even throw a wrench in the plan. Like, he should have lost the title at SummerSlam. This wasn't always Roman back. Roman should have won it then. This wasn't always back with Ro- when Braun Lester came back, he beat the streak out like, all right, the worst thing WWE can do is put the title on Brock because they're going to fuck up booking as long as he has that title because everything going to go through Brock. And they basically make him an unbeatable beast for the most part. I'm like, this is going to suck. I mean, that was easy yeah, but until you put the, if Roman like, wins this. Like, he put butts in seats, but thank you. If you're going to have him as a sideshow attraction, you treat him as a sideshow attraction. You don't tie, you don't tie your top title to somebody who's not going to be there most of the time, and then your upper... The, Roman's feuding about the feud with the Miz, and then against the Miz, but the Miz is the Intercontinental Champion. Roman's the big dog. He feuding for a mid card title. And he getting beat down by the Miz garage. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, I'm, pointing there. Yeah, I'm like, I'm one. not taking away from them, but like, Roman got annihilated by Braun Strowman. He's elevated up there. Miz, they're not booking him as he up there. 
Miz basically uh, uh, at the top of the upper mid, uh, at the, whatever the main event is. Yeah, he's at the gate of it. Roman should be feuding with the Miz for the Intercontinental Title, but because they're bro- not, they're 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 gonna re- waste the fucking Shield reunion on the fucking Miz, right? And that's even worse. <laughs> yes, that's bad. It's terrible. And I, I highly doubt. I highly doubt if they put AOP back in NXT because they ain't ready to call up yet. I don't think they're gonna use a Shield reunion off the Miz Garage. To de- help debut Optus of Pain. They still got one more. Uh, like I told you, AOP got one more takeover at least before they get called. Now they, call, they haven't been on TV since they got beat for the title. They the sense of it is they already did another thing of taping where they was at that one. Okay. So they um, finally came back. That way, I like if they already brought them back to NXT because they don't believe they're ready yet. I like I doubt they're gonna debut that strong against the Shield. I'd send them you know, that would be interesting. I'd send Officer Payne to SmackDown anyway because New Day's going to need new yeah. challenges as they don't do so. I was going to say that because they dress so similar. I said, it would be interesting. A- AOP debuts again, <laughs> debuts on the Shield. That'd be good yeah, that would be good. They had a third number. Mm-hmm. But no, his, my, his my, but I had a solution to that. They injured one of the three Shield members. They injured either Dean. I said, I said injured Dean. You injured Roman. No. <laughs> You the tag team champion, so there you go. You got no, the title. No, they're gonna lose the titles. Yeah, to the author of the painting. Hey, they can free bird it. But <laughs> Dean, the crazy one who would fight AOP, uh-huh. so AOP just beat the shit out of him even worse than anybody. So AOP injures Dean, and they can find some more little concrete blocks to just super collide <laughs> Dean and Brock. <laughs> you injure you you Roman because when Roman comes back, he can just tear through both of them. Cause Roman sleeping though, so they ain't... if they did your plan, that's exactly what they would do. They would injure Roman and they would have Roman come back and just tear through both of them. But the problem is they sacrifice those two to elevate Roman, who don't need elevator. No, the problem is like, there's no point in injuring <laughs> Roman there because because you taking Roman off TV, they ain't taking the big dog off TV. You you can shit ain't nothing else going on. <laughs> but see that's the, that's what I was gonna say about Brock Lesnar the champion. I honestly don't care that he don't defend the title every pay per view. Because some of these pay per views don't need Brock Lesnar. The problem is, most of these pay per views don't need Brock Lesnar because Brock Lesnar is there. I wish SmackDown would do that. Don't put the WWE title on every fucking show because shit. It, the, the thing is, I wish they would do one pay per view a month, have Raw have one month, have SmackDown have the next month. That way you have Raw, pay, Raw would have what? Eight pay per views instead of still having 12? You count off, ain't it? Unless you, unless you just combine it all. Uh, it's like pay per views a year now. Oh, I was like, much. I was like, they have one pay per view. I said they split them. Unless you talking about the uh, super no, pay per views, they have six apiece. They will have six apiece, but then you got like I said, the super pay per views of what? What shit? That still had twelve. No, they had ten. So all right. What's well, not that? That might you just do a co brand one. But I mean, at the end of the day. But the thing the thing is, you see, like if you have a title match every thirty days, it, it can water down the title. And then, brought, like. The thing about Brock, Brock ain't fighting the same opponent because he's not there. So we're not seeing Brock in a program where he's fighting the same dude every three, uh, every month. Because if Brock was there from January to March, he's fighting only one person the way WWE books it. And you know how those matches go go. Brock only got one way of wrestling. Which is why I hate that contract. I'm like... He, yeah, he's an attraction. He's a show, but I'm like, but because one thing WWE don't, they don't space shit out. They like to do programs, and I understand that. Been like that since whenever. But the thing is, though, in in today's time, that shit get boring as hell because they can't write. Uh, the Attitude Era and then the Ruth Aggression Era, at least they had good writers. So when you had Edge and John Cena feud so much, it was different every time. Yeah, they had better writers, and also top of that. Those guys back then, either the better performers came, just shine better. I mean... Well, yeah, now everybody can do pretty much everything. Because the problem is, there's too, many people, there's too many people up here now that just cannot cut a promo where they script it or they don't have a script. I'm like... I just, they need to let some of these guys improv. Yeah, give them a script, but let them improv that script. Yeah, but how, like, the problem is, how many these folks can even improv? Because Cena does it, and when Cena do it, it shit look amazing. When Jericho do it, it look amazing. But when Jericho, about- Jericho and Cena can take the script written word for word and make it seem like it's original, coming out of their mouth. Yeah, but look how long it took to do it. But at the same time, Rusev already got it. 
Turn the ball. Rusev is just criminally underused. But that's yep. a different story. <laughs> Bray Wyatt got it, and I don't know why he cut away, took away the promo. I saw criminal underused. Enzo no, got no, he's it. Criminal underused. He just used wrong. Enzo got it, but Enzo just can't wrestle. Yeah, and he and he's the cruiserweight champion. He's the champion of the. He know two moves. He should have three moves. Call Big Cass. <laughs> hey, you want you know what would have made his cruiserweight title reign so much better if Big Cass was still around because you couldn't beat him. No little guy can't beat Big Cat. Every time it looked like one I'm about to be in, though, he just come in the ring and boot the shit out of him. See, it, see <laughs> if Big Cat was still there, is well, Braun, well, he still got Braun. He was still got Braun, but uh, yeah. the Cruiserweights would not be his. Uh, well, you would have got a better match because now when he get Braun, you got Braun versus Big Cat. Because Big Cat ain't going to just let it slide. And then Enzo, a little annoying ass, is probably going to do something to mess Braun up. It was just stupid to break the two guys up. I know why they did it, because they felt like uh, Big Cass would get major heat by killing Enzo. It worked, but nobody cares about Big Cass. Yeah, exactly. Nobody and then they debuted him with that horrible fucking music. Yep. They do everybody like that. Now, I guess, because Emma's new music was god awful. Oh, Jesus, don't <laughs> mind me. I had to go back and hear because, you know, I don't want to watch Raw like that. I thought Who's Angels were committing suicide or something. Yeah, but kept saying, this shit? this shit is horrible. Then CFO talking about shit, ain't all. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> WWE oh, okay. is suing the Young Bucks. I mean, they sent the Young Bucks a and d for the Too Sweet Jester because they claim they own it and they were, could seat as much as 150000 in debt. Oh, so that's legit? Uh-huh. I thought I just said they were doing on being the elite. Mm-mm. That's why they uh, uh, invaded Raw. <laughs> How about giving the catchphrase back? <laughs> Cody was like, I'm taking back my name. I'm taking back my last name. They taking it back to the gimmick. <laughs> Being elite is so entertaining. And, and, and the young buck said, Kenny, I'm going to write that shit down. You, wait, you are sure that season to season is not them just playing around, right? Uh-uh. WWE sent them a legit season. I did not know they actually did it. <laughs> Can't remember before, they like, you can't really sue for that because... Oh, you talking about the same too sweet or something? Yeah, the same. One. Oh, that's they, oh, that's different. Not too sweet, it's suck it. Oh no, they say they sent it to him over the too sweet. That's the oh, same. the too sweet too. Yeah, the same one that uh, Gallows and Anderson. Talk, wait, you talking saying it or just just a gesture? Okay, the gesture. I'm not sure how they can send a cease and desist over there. Yeah, they yeah. claim they own it. No, I mean the copyright. Of no, it. I mean yeah, copyright law. You cannot you cannot um, claim um, bodily gestures. Just like you can't claim. Just like you can't copyright somebody uh, flipping the bird. Yeah, just last page. Because oh, the thing is, the problem is with that cuff, for somebody <laughs> brought up, NC State. Because NC State, the Wolf Pack, they do the um, Too Sweet Sun. They did that before WWE did. Um, had it. Well, well, that's what it says right here. So the legit <coughs> caught, caught season to season. One it hit says, caught in the body pack. Stop using the gesture. <laughs> I don't show you. I don't know. I, I guess they don't want bother trying it. I guess they don't want bother trying to WWE court back. I like that we can't uh, own that unless you talk about those saying too sweet or something like that. Oh, we done with this episode. Uh, I, 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 they, they said what I basically want to say about Brock one that uh, Oh yeah, fuck, fuck that match. Negative fifty. <laughs> I was going to do, do the Roth all thing by heels, but I don't know. Go ahead. Oh well, okay. Back to what I said earlier, I'm doing a Raw Dog segment right here about heels because Raw uh, Dog segment because <laughs> exclusive worldwide. <laughs> Here's the thing. When it comes to heels in the company, because this comes up because of Jinder Mahal. When Jinder Mahal called uh, Nakamura Mr. Miyagi, folks went fucking ape shit over it, talking about it, and then fans in the crowd were chanting, that's too far. And then some journalists up here made it big on Twitter. And I said, you do, I'm like, you do realize this is how heels are supposed to do. Heels are supposed to get negative reactions. Heels are not nice guys. They're not end up. Well, they're not cool guys. You know, the NWO, as Whitey would say, if you were here, kind of made cool heels a thing. Yeah. But thing is, in general, heels are the ones that you're supposed to be booing. Now I get some. I get some of the audience will cheer the heels because that's who they like most. Where, but in general, heels are not nice. What Shane McMahon, I mean, what Kevin Owens did, to Sami Zayn about to execute the man by putting a chair on his neck. That's not nice. You ain't supposed to be cheering for that. Because that's the wrong thing to be doing. When the auntie going to get out guillotines to people, you're not supposed to be cheering that kind of stuff. 
Gary Pink up here basically up here murdering somebody. <laughs> And then going back to Undertaker again, when that man putting people on crosses, Kane putting people nuts and batteries and stuff. I mean, going back to one of the bigger hill moments of Hulk Hogan going hill. Like today, Hogan doing that most likely will get cheered, and that will ruin the whole moment. Like the villain is supposed to be the villain because they're not nice. The faces like you ain't got to like the hero. Cause fuck, I don't like Superman. But thing is, Superman's still the good guy. Everything he's doing is supposed to be the right thing. Now, whether you actually like the character or not, that's one thing. But in general, the good guy's supposed to be cheered. The heel's supposed to be hit, um, hated. So, I think I see with WWE, especially with Jim Hall, I think it's got to be reaction. When you got a heel and they're not getting booed, and technically the heel's not doing the job, you should not be cheering them. So, Jim Hall called him Mr. Miyagi, and then... What do you say about the try uh, d- doing the L R sound thing? You all root the same. <laughs> so you root the same. I'm like, yeah, that pro- that one probably was a little much. But the thing is, hey, it's all fair for heels. Like I said, lo- as long as WWE doesn't go too far, like I saw if this man, well, then again, if this man did drop what's up, my nigga, before. So I don't know, but WWE publicly traded as Go Ham said earlier in the show that could cost them money and stuff like that for. Fans who do get pissed off, but at the same time, WWE is playing off on the other thing. Normally, those fans get pissed off because now the heel says something. So now those same Japanese fans who are pissed off that Jinder Mahal did that little, he roots the same, that roots the same, doing the whole language thing, saying Asian people all look alike, which they kind of do. I ain't trying to try be that way, but it's, they do if you ain't familiar with them. But thing is, Jinder can say that. He didn't go too far with it. He ain't called uh, Nakamura a chink. He ain't called him sushi dick or something like that. He kept it somewhat PG. Mr. Miyagi, I'm like, hey, he ain't a negative Asian stereotype. So, they kept, so he kept it that way. But for the Japanese fans, uh, how many there are, if they're watching, you know when they go to um No Mercy, they want to see, what, I mean, not No Mercy, but... uh. Was it Hell in a Cell? Yeah, Hell in a Cell. Next paper you have smacked the Hell in a yeah, Cell? Hayek. So in Hell in a Cell, those Japanese fans, are def- if they're paying attention, they're definitely going to see Jinder Mahal get his ass kicked by Nakamura for the things that he said. So that's the thing. As a heel, you want that. Case, another case of point, Enzo and the whole Cruiserweight division, he wins in bullshit fashion. He's then on 205, then I mean on Raw, he has a contract where you can't touch him. I mean, that's classic WWE move, trying to use um, the law or something like that, prevent you from losing your title. Never so pissed off, he beats his ass anyway. Enzo, and then he do a double turn, and then folks want to see Enzo get his ass kicked by Braun Strowman and then later the Cruiserweights. And then on 205 Live, Enzo comes out there in that crutch, and then the crowd got, he got a reaction out of the crowd, Especially when you start whooping Nell's ass with that arm crutch. I'm like, it's all what the heel's supposed to do. Like, I understand some folks want to cheer the heels, but at the same time, what a heel's supposed to do, a heel is supposed to be hated. He's not supposed to be nice. He's supposed to say questionable things. Well, and her. They're supposed to say questionable things just as long as they don't cross the line too much. And the good guys usually are supposed to be the ones who fight against that kind of stuff. And this is also on the fly, so the next raw talk, the next raw doll segment would be much better than this one. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. Um, well, I guess that concludes Rare Wrestling episode sixty-five. Um, we will see you later for possibly another Diakas review and predictions, and um, episode sixty-six, we should include Hayek of overview and results. So until the next time, you motherfuckers, peace. What are we up about for? Four weeks? Five uh, weeks. Something like that. Hey, hey uh, a- Hyatt car looked really damn good. Mm. Yep. <coughs> Except for the weekend's Randy Orton match. Because it's Randy Orton. <laughs>